Hey everyone, J Rob Plays here, and I just want to put together a video today going over my favorite loadout to use against automatons, and it really specializes against their weaknesses. Make sure that you have the best defense to put up against them, and it's the most versatile loadout that I've been able to put together to go against bots. So whenever my friends get on, and we're going to go and we're going to farm bots for a bit just to get some experience against them, since there's no real major order or order right now addressing the bots, uh, it's still good to go out and test certain things and to use certain items that have been buffed or nerfed since the changes. And ever since they changed some of the armor ratings and things, this loadout really shines. So I want to start out first with that, with the armor, so we can kind of talk about what I like to go into with. Obviously you want to match, so you can see here I'm nice and stylish, but the armor that I'm going with is going to be the FS-23 Battlemaster. Any heavy armor will work, but this particular one shines because it's got 50% resistance to explosive damage. And when it comes to the bots, there's a lot of explosive damage out on the field, especially with the rockets that are going to be fired your way from the destroyers and from the uh, the scouts with the the rocket launcher. So this is going to be the, the armor that I recommend, especially because the bots are slow in plotting. They kind of walk towards you. None of them really run at you except for the Hulk. So you really don't have to worry about having a whole lot of stamina to run away for the most part. You want to make sure that you're able to survive hits from the bots. And with this armor, you'll see that I'm able to actually take a little bit of hits that are like small glance blows from laser fire at a distance from a lot of the smaller enemies and as long as it's not something too heavy like a tank or a cannon hitting you you're going to be able to really shrug off a lot of the damage with the new armor rating so that makes a big difference because you don't have to worry about too much running a shield generator if you don't want to and this loadout doesn't actually run a shield generator because of the heavy armor so that I can kind of still tank a little bit of damage but for the most part since this is going to be a very offensive build and it's a very good build to fight in ranges that normally the bots are not really good at engaging at it's going to really like I said expose a lot of the bots weaknesses and make them easy targets and it's going to be easy to clean up in a lot of your battles as long as you play strategically of course. Now speaking of the weapons, I want to go over the primary weapon that we'll be using. This is going to be the last 16 sickle and it's going to be a light armor penetrating weapon with heat capabilities meaning that it actually can have infinite ammo as long as you're managing your ammo correctly but it's really great because it doesn't need to have infinite ammo it has cartridges that you can switch out whenever the weapon overheats to allow you to continue fighting and allow you to kind of stay in the fight longer and it's actually very useful because there's some situations where you have to hold on the trigger and you may end up hitting a cartridge expenditure and you can still continue on without having to wait for that heat to come back down so it's a very awesome and a very well designed weapon for the strengths like it's not as necessarily going to be the best running gun weapon because it does have a little bit of a spool up time so you can't just continually pull it out last second and expect it to save you you want to make sure that you're thinking ahead but you shouldn't get into that position if you watch how I use this weapon and how I take advantage of it you will rarely find yourself in that situation where you're overwhelmed because this weapon does so well in handling groups and so let's let's go into that now well, the last 16 can be used from a hip fire and it's actually very accurate to me the best way that I like to do is I like to scope in using the last 16 so that I can be very accurate with it against the bots. They have a very obvious weak point which is their head and they're super vulnerable even in the more armored units in their head and in their kind of waist areas and so it really really shines using this very clean crosshair and it's it's a uh, very easy to use crosshair. It's not very heavy. It moves very quickly as long as you have your sensitivity appropriate for whatever platform you're playing on, whether it be console or PC. You're going to be able to hit your shots very accurately. And if you need to crouch, go ahead and crouch or prone, and that'll help really tighten your bullet spread. But this gun has almost no recoil, so that's going to be the greatest benefit of this weapon is just being able to lay on the trigger as long as you're holding your sights steady uh, and you account for that little bit of recoil that it does have, you're going to hit your shots and they don't take very many shots to take out bots as you can see from here me taking out bots at a distance. Now whether it's medium range or long range again it's going to hit its target and as long as you're employing a little bit of burst fire you're going to be able to really control its ability to not overload. Now even if it does overload and you need to replace the, the cartridge, the cartridge reload is very short and so it's it's going to be no different than if you're using a normal weapon in which you're having to reload like the meta weapons that are out there currently like the breaker shotgun. You're not really going to feel too much of a difference there. Again the only thing you have to account for is a little bit of spin up time and as long as you know that that's going to be the case and you're going to be making sure that you're pulling out the weapon ahead of time and thinking ahead of time and not trying to use it as a reactionary weapon like you would the breaker shotgun for example. 
people, you're going to find yourself really well ahead of your enemy that you're facing. Because again, these guys, they just plod very slowly towards you. They don't really run, and the units that do run are some of the weaker units outside of the Hulk, for example. So using this weapon appropriately is going to put you, in my opinion, at the greatest advantage when it comes to the bots. Now here you can see the range that we're actually going to be using this on, and it's so far away, but we're still being able to hit the headshots. I can even hit the head of a shield destroyer coming at me. If the laser didn't destroy him, I was going to destroy him. And you can see here and other instances in which I'm taking down shield destroyers at closer ranges with no problem. And it, sometimes you may get flinched here and there and you have to get back on your target to pull it down so you can kill the shield destroyers because they can't flinch you with their weapon. But since you have your heavy armor, you're going to be able to tank some of those shots. And as you can see, even here, I was tanking some shots and not taking any actual damage from it and knock out those destroyers, no problem. So the uh, the range on this thing is absolutely amazing. Burst fire is going to make sure that you're hitting your target, and it also makes sure that you have infinite ammo. So again, just shows how much of an advantage this gun puts you at when you're facing the bots. Even berserkers, if you can catch them early, are not a problem. You can see here me mowing down these berserkers, shooting them with headshots. I can also shoot them in the body and, and also have that scenario where their torso falls apart for them and they can't continue and then you can just move right along. So even Berserkers are not a problem if you catch them early. They get a little too close for you, just pull out your SMG and knock them down and they won't be an issue from there. Now normally Devastators are a problem, but with the last 16 with some well-placed shots in their head, even with all their armor, that head is still exposed. So as long as you land your shots, they're gonna go down rather quickly. And sometimes they surprise you at how quickly they go down because they end up falling over just out of nowhere. And you think, what happened? Well, they, their head popped, you just couldn't see it sometimes from distance. This even goes for when I'm fighting Rocket Devastators. Rocket Devastators the same way. Normally people will take Rocket Devastators rockets off so that they can kill them easily from there and safely. In this case, as long as you're standing in a good spot from the Rocket Devastator and you're not actually exposing yourself, you're taking your cover like you normally would be with bots, Rocket Devastators are also not a problem, just like the Shields Devastators were, and as long as you're landing your shots, of course. Another great benefit, again, when you talk about the accuracy of this weapon and the way that it's able to fire for a sustained period of time, is that you can take out hulks with this weapon when you're working with your teammates and you're able to get the back shot on the Hulk, as you see I'm doing here. You can take the Hulk out in less than one clip, let yourself reset, and then move right along with your fight. It even works in like emergency situations where you have a teammate getting pushed, and you're in close proximity like I am to this Hulk here. As you can see, without overheating, it's able to take down this Hulk, and we're able to save my teammate and move into a position to work on uh, clearing the extract. Now for the secondary, this is going to be just a quick show of the secondary. I like to run the Redeemer. Uh, right now I only have the Peacemaker, the Dagger, and the Redeemer, and the Peacemaker and the Dagger. Well, the Peacemaker is okay. The Dagger is pretty much useless in a lot of situations, just doesn't do enough damage. The Redeemer is going to be your best weapon that you're going to be using for your secondary. You can pull it out when things are pushing you, when you have like a lot of bots in your face. Even Berserkers coming at you, you can take down one or two Berserkers or well-placed shots per clip. It reloads fast, and it does a lot of damage in a short period of time, so it's really the most potent secondary weapon, and this is the one that I recommend. Uh, and you can see, you know, whenever a sword trooper pushes me, for example, I pull it out, knock him down, and I can move out. And it, very rarely is that going to happen, but those four mags get you by, because by the time you end up getting ammo again, this will get the additional clips whenever you grab ammo throughout the field. So I rarely ever run out of Redeemer ammo, because I use it as kind of a backup when things push me. Now for the grenade, you can run a bunch of different things. I tend to run the high explosive grenade because I like to bank them into the fabricator so that they can blow up. Uh, you can also run a normal frag grenade or you can run impact grenades. You can even run stun grenades if you have those locked to help you deal with larger enemies. But again, I tend to do high explosives because again, the enemies don't really get that close to me with my loadout and the high explosives help me when I'm getting a bank kill. So these are gonna be the ones that I actually really recommend going with. So now that you've seen some good examples of me fighting with the last 16, I'm sure you've also seen in some of the footage. The other weapon that's going to bring balance and kind of highlight this particular build as being the most versatile build that I can put together for the bots is going to be the auto cannon. And this thing just shreds bots as long as you know how to use it. And again, you're properly positioned. You make sure you're reloaded. Uh, you can even do a half clip reload, which is a nice fast reload if you need to be on the move and still use it. So it's got such a lot of good advantages. Uh, and you'll see that a full reload even doesn't take very long. I've got that running as well in the background. You can one-shot troopers, of course. They're not going to be a problem. You just move from trooper to trooper, uh, and you can kill striders with this, which is going to be the most favorite thing that I do with the auto cannon because the striders are such an annoyance for a lot of the loadouts because you have to either get close to them, get behind them to shoot the strider, dive to the side, 
or you have to make sure that your teammates are holding the aggro so you can shoot the strider, you have to throw a grenade behind them with the auto cannon. All you have to do is put a well-placed shot on the very top of the strider. Sometimes people shoot them in the legs and that'll work too because the explosion damage can reach around and kill the strider. But what you can see is that if you don't actually shoot them high enough in the kind of the eye hole area of the strider, you won't actually kill the rider with the explosive damage and they can take four or five, six shots sometimes, which is really annoying because that's like half your clip on the auto cannon, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're placing that shot a little higher up and you're getting that one shot on these guys. And it's really good for being able to switch between your LAS and going back into your auto cannon, take out the striders, go back to your LAS to take out the troopers. Just kind of back and forth works great on devastators as well. Uh, you can knock out devastators by hitting them one well-placed shot in the head, or you can put a couple of shots into their body and they'll die from there. Rocket devastators go down. Regular Devastators go down. Shield Devastators are kind of meh because you have to shoot them in the shoulder. So I would use your LAS in that case and just shoot them right in the eye. But Devastators, for the most part, are like paper to this thing. And it's just, it's amazing because you're running around. You have so much versatility with this. You do have to give up, obviously, your backpack because you're going to need to reload from your backpack straight there, which doesn't take it very long again. But it's totally worth it because, again, I'm running heavy armor. So I don't have to worry about having the shield generator because the heavy armor absorbs a lot of the lighter damage I would take and it allows me to move back and forth, back and forth between these things. Even the more dangerous automaton enemies, like the Hulk, for example, is not a problem. If you put some well-placed shots into the Hulk, the Hulk will go down too. Sometimes it takes a little bit because the explosive damage kind of moves the Hulk around to where you can't really hit it in the eye very well, but if you just keep plugging away at the thing, by the time it gets to you, you should be able to put it down in less than one clip, and obviously if you shoot it in the back, if you've got its vents, it's going to only take one or two shots from there. But being able to kill a Hulk that's pushing you from the front, and being able to really disable that Hulk using any of your weapons and not having to rely on your stratagems or if your stratagems are down it really makes again this is a super versatile loadout and I feel much safer having an auto cannon versus Hulk than many of the other weapons and capabilities I don't have to stop to call a stratagem any of that it's just amazing how fast it can kill Hulks and how well it does it, it handles all of the larger enemies for example the tower cannons and the weapon artillery are some of the most difficult things to deal with because they take a lot of damage and they'll blow your stratagems just trying to take out the artillery and just trying to take out these these cannons. Uh, I've even had a tower cannon absorb a full 500 kilogram bomb like nothing and still continue shooting. So the auto cannon is a great, great way to deal with these. Get behind it. You'll see that there's going to be vents available for the weak spot and a good two or three shots on that cannon, which can be fired very quickly to prevent it from turning around on you. Will take out the cannon and it makes quick work of it. Also, it makes quick work of the artillery. So with the artillery, you can just run right up on the artillery wherever they're firing as long as you're, you know, stay moving and get your shots in quickly. About three or four shots will knock out an artillery and you can do that for the whole artillery base. Usually there's like two or three per bot base. So you just get in there and knock them out and you can even uh, complete objectives that require you to kill the, the artillery. You can also use it to take out the towers that do the illegal broadcast. One good shot from an auto cannon will knock down a tower. And so it's got so many good uh, utility options. You can open containers, for example. Normally the containers that you run up on that are partially buried, you have to throw a grenade. Say you're running stun grenades or you just don't want to waste your grenades because you're saving them for other things. You can just do one shot with the auto cannon. It'll open up the container. You can get down there and you can loot that as well. So this combo again really shines. It really makes me feel like I have a Swiss Army knife of a loadout. I can handle every single bot. I can handle the tanks. You can shoot the tanks in the back as well in their weak spots, just like you do the towers. I tend to use the rail cannons for the tanks, though, and then everything else I'm using my uh, normal weapons for, you know, my auto cannon and my last 16. But just the balance of having the last 16. Hardly anything gets to me. If it does get to me, I can pull out the auto cannon and shred everything down. The auto cannon's aim is very, very direct uh, on its sights. Some of the things are a little bit off, kind of upper to the left on a lot of the sights. They're misaligned. With the auto cannon, it seems pretty well placed. Wherever you place your reticle, the shot will usually go. So I really encourage you to give this loadout a try. When you take it out into any of the bot locations, just kind of think through how you're going to approach any of your engagements. Take the engagements at a longer distance. Go for headshots. Pace your shots. Burst fire. Your auto cannon, the same thing. You're going to want to pace your shots. You're going to want to allow the reticle to reset fully before you take your next shot. You don't want to kind of just lay on the trigger on this one. You want to have well-placed shots because you know these well-placed shots are so incredibly powerful that you don't really need to spam your shots to hit exactly what you need to hit. You're going to hit your shot, it's going to be dead. Again, it mows down 
regular enemies, striders, devastators, everything you can think of coming at you. You could even uh, shoot into a dropship and kill a bunch of stuff underneath the dropship. I tend to like to let everything fall down from the dropship and then I can take it down from there and I can piece it together how I want, taking the last 16 for all of the smaller enemies and then switching to the auto cannon to take out the bigger enemies. Whether it's a team mission or solo, I still feel comfortable running around by myself, going around completing the objectives to allow my teammates to go and complete other objectives, which is going to maximize the time that we're out there on. I rarely have to be reinforced using this loadout unless something crazy happens like you get kind of hit by two or three things at the same time from distance for the most part I usually hold my own I rarely ever die and I'm able to complete objectives no problem if I get pushed if I have large groups this takes care of any enemy I can think of it completely neutralizes any of the attacks and the groupings that I see and I don't have to worry about a situation where hey I've got striders so I've got to run away until I can deal with the striders if I'm out of grenades I don't have to worry about dealing with heavier units coming after me because I can pull on my auto cannon and lay out the heavier units if it's like a large group of heavy units. Obviously, I have my stratagems. And so, again, great loadout. And speaking of stratagems, let's go into those because those are going to round out the loadout. Now, to cover the stratagems really quickly, the stratagems that I tend to use that make the most sense to me are going to be the orbital rail cannon strike. This is going to help take out all the annihilator tanks and a lot of the big units like the hulks. If you get stuck in a bad situation and you're at a rail cannon uh, rounds, for example, you can't reload, this is going to be the best way to call this in and to knock out large things so that you can continually move through the map going to the objective to objective without getting harassed too much. The orbital rail cannon strike has a low cooldown time, unless you're on a planet, of course, that increases that, but it actually is almost always up when I need it. Then from there, the orbital laser is going to be the second thing that I load in. The great thing about the orbital laser is when you pop it, it'll actually go around a base, for example, if you pop it in a base and start blowing up things in its path, including any fabricators or anything that can be exploded in the area. And it's really, really good at taking out tanks and then moving on to the smaller units that you're having a little bit of trouble with if you get too much density. Now you can, if you want to switch this out for something that's a little bit more readily available, the Eagle Airstrike. The Eagle Airstrike will do a very similar thing and it's going to have a much less cooldown and you just have that lower rearm time depending on if you have your ship module set up for it. But really I prefer the orbital laser in a lot of situations and that's what I run with. And that's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate everybody watching to the end. If you have any questions, of course, you can post them down into the comments. I like helping newer players and the other game that I do, I do Destiny 2 content as well. So I like helping newer players, and if you're newer and you have any suggestions or any questions on loadouts, things that you have trouble with or you're struggling with, drop them in the comments. I'd be glad to answer any of your questions. And I'm always glad to help spread democracy. So I hope to see you guys out on the battlefield, and I'll see you in the next video.